just milk Elsa. We had power, if you notice, power is out here. Um, we had a real bad storm the last two days and I guess a tree fell on the line or something. So I was still without power. Uh, so I couldn't milk at four like I typically do. So I had to kind of hold off to about 5.30, but we finished up. But now after that, what we did was um, our other little heifer, we're gonna try to do a little training. So I'm actually off today from work. So um, we put her in the stanchion. This is this is uh, Allie. We think she's bred with our bull, of course. Um, but we just we're letting her practice getting in the stanchion. Now, you know the thing about this. Watch this. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. You just need to kind of see how she's kicking like that. You just need to start rubbing her low, and that way she gets used to somebody feeling on her udders. Now, she's this is her first day, so she's gonna be terrible. But every every few days, I want to do this one one thing with her, where she comes into the stanchion. Uh, you know, I kind of rub on her, kind of see. Yeah, I can pet her; she's fine doing that. Um, but just as in just rubbing on her, trying to get her used to um, coming in here and milking. So, uh, just to start, just want to show you a little video. Um, she came in the stanchion good, and I gave her a lot of uh, uh, feed just to kind of see how she do with it, and she's done well. Uh, I put her head in pretty tight, and I loosened it now just because. At this point, it don't matter because she's staying there eating. But when she first walked in, I had to kind of tighten up on her. But I uh, just want to kind of show you, um, stanchion training is a pretty good deal. Now, uh, she's still probably lacking four or five months before she has a, a calf, if she calves. I mean, if she is pregnant. We've noticed she's not been in the heat when the bull's with her. He's not interested. So I'm, I'm thinking she's pregnant. We will confirm that with a, um, with a dairyman. Uh, he's going to come check her in a few weeks. So... Uh, but she's doing good. She's actually eating a lot. It seems like she's wanting to eat more and more and more and more and more. So I'm hoping that she is bred. Um, she's acted really good. She's um, she's putting a little weight in her in her belly too. So I hope that that shows that's a good sign. But uh, but anyway, she's um, she's doing good. I've been trying to just train her to this stanchion. Uh, first day to actually get her in the stanchion. Now she's come in the barn and ate, but she's not come in the stanchion. So she's doing really good. I'm proud of her. So um, we're gonna just kind of mess with her a little bit, kind of pet her a little bit. Just kind of let her know that we're going to be kind of just rubbing all over. We're going to get a brush, kind of brush her. Uh, and that's how you train her. And hopefully, um, if she don't kick me, we'll keep laying her leg back down where it's supposed to be. Hold her tail up if we need to. Uh, if worse comes to worse, you can buy what you call a cinch strap. It kind of goes around her midsection right there. And that's what actually holds her where she can't really move. So uh, we're going to try not to do that. So we're going to try to train early. And that way, by the time she casts, uh, and she feeds her calf. Not only is she used to the calf eating on her, but she can be used to us milking it. So. All right, so what we're doing today is we're actually putting some deep mulch, basically some straw and some hay around the potatoes. They're, they're needing more room to grow, and there's some potatoes. As you see, there's a little potato right there growing uh, underneath. And if I can cover it up, keep it covered. Uh, I, I've seen on Art and Bree, and I've seen on New Living Traditions doing it, and several other homesteaders. They're making it where you can uh, instead put more dirt on it, you gotta dig up to put hay in it and get some more they can grow in that hay. So they're all doing good. They're struggling a little bit. I think it's because we've had so much rain lately, but uh, we're gonna see if we can get them back doing good. So I'm gonna fertilize them, put some hay in there, and we'll see if we can get going. Here's the rosemary that I dug up. You can see where some of that was dying. And I feel like definitely I'm having, I, I really feel like it's something dealing with my soul. Um, we are taking a soil sample to our local extension service to kind of get that tested and see if there's anything missing from our soil. So I brought it in here and planted it in. This is um, what you can pick up, uh, black cow. Now we do have a compost going that is not ready. So, um... I'm sure this is gonna probably take some time to heal and recover probably several weeks like my other ones did but um so it's in, in it's in here it's repotted um, in some really good soil so um, if it's some type of disease on the plant obviously it's gonna take over and the plants just gonna die but it was something going on with my soil I'm sure we'll see the plant recover over the next few weeks um, like we did the time and the and the um, sage so um we'll just we're just gonna kind of watch it and go from there but it is up and it is in black cow um, manure that you can just pick up from the local store and it is in a pot in the greenhouse um 
So I will be watching this little booger for the next few weeks and hopefully we'll see some signs of improvement and some signs of new growth. So I just filmed a few days ago and showed y'all, I think I showed y'all this bed with the asparagus and stuff in it, my asparagus, but now I have sunflowers. These have opened up since the rain. There's one and I have one more that's not ready. This one has opened up and this big one right here is not opened up yet, but just so close. So, yay. So speaking of seeds, we had this um, garden planted down here with greens last year. And here, this big thing is sticking up out of the ground that we left. We let this one go to seed. So I'm gonna do the same thing to it. I'm fixing to pull it up. It's got lots of seed pods on it. Some of them are, are look like they're really getting dried up. Here, let me see. Let's pull one off here. You can tell a difference in that. Can you tell a difference in that? This one is a lot lighter than those. I'm still not 100%. I thought this thing would be ready by now, but it doesn't look like those are quite ready yet. Let's see if we can just get into one and look. Let's see, uh-oh. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure that these are ready yet. They're not real crackly. Um, like you can tell on this is dry and crackly. Well, it's wet. It normally would be dry and crackly. And you can see those beautiful seeds in there. But it's still too soon to get those seeds. So we're going to leave this and um, pull this thing up another day to collect those seeds. They're not, it's not quite ready, but I have been, um, have been waiting on this. This is all mustard greens. That's mustard greens. So we're gonna wait. I feel like some of these, which this is probably the greenest one, and you can tell that that's not as green, but it's still pretty green. And I don't want them to be green. I want them to be um, real light brown. And you can feel a difference when you squeeze them. And they're mushy and you squeeze them. And they're so dry and crispy that they just crack open. And that's what you're looking for right there. When you squeeze them and they are so dry that they just crack open and the seeds start falling out. That's what you're looking for, guys, when you're collecting seeds. Okay, another thing on our to-do list was to get the rest of this heirloom lettuce. Um, I don't remember exactly what variety this is. This was a heirloom lettuce. And as you can see, they uh, we let it go to seed, set seed pods. Now, these seed pods are not ready to be collected, but these are. So this is what I'm going to do, my plans for these. I'm going to collect the ones that are dried out and crispy. I'm going to collect, that, collect those. Oh, the seed fell out in my hand. It fell out up here in my hand. All right, hold on. Let me focus. There we go. So I'm going to collect those and put them in this bag. And once I get inside where it's not quite as humid, I'm going to lay these back out. Oh, there they are. I'm going to lay those back out and let those dry before I zip them up in this Ziploc bag, just because it has been wet, hot, and humid here. The ones that are not ready, like these green ones, I'm gonna leave these on the stem and just leave them sitting out here on the, in this greenhouse until they get completely dried out and ready to collect. And when they turn to this crispy looking, dead look, then they're ready to collect but you want to make sure that they're good and dried out. And like I said, just because it is so hot and humid here in Mississippi and it has been raining a lot for the past few days, 
and they've been sitting out there in the rain. Once I get these inside, I'm gonna take them back out of this bag and just either put them on a napkin or a piece of wax paper or something and just make sure that your seeds are good and dry before you zip, zip them up and store them for a while. Okay, I got started with these and as you can see, they are so wet that they're sticking to my fingers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stop. I'm gonna try to get these off. I'm gonna stop and I'm just gonna let this sit in my greenhouse for the next few days and just dry up. Because the more I got into them, you can, like you can see my other hand. They're just sticking to my fingers because they're so wet. And that's not what you want because when they get that wet and even if, even like I said, I could take these inside and dry them out, which I still will do. But you, any moisture, it's so important to get seeds dry to the point of you don't want any moisture sitting on your seeds because it will cause your seeds to go bad. All kinds of bacteria and uh, funguses can grow. So um, you, you definitely want that off. And sorry about the noise. My kids and their power wheels are just zooming around everywhere. Mud riding. As you can see, they're having fun in the mud. Not phasing them a bit. <laughs> but anyway, so that's one of the projects that I'm going to put a halt on. I'm going to stop this because I want those seeds to be a little bit more dry. So, um, we're just going to leave them out here, let them dry up, and I will come out here maybe in a few days and harvest, um, harvest those seeds. Because even the smallest things to us is important. Um, the seeds that God gives us after the plant is done, um, and we want to be good stewards with that. So, um, we're going to get those seeds, but we're not going to do it today. Okay, so right now I'm planting some marigolds that I grew up from seed. I've had some little bugs and worms in my strawberry beds. The bad thing about using DE and neem oil is once it rains and has been raining, like it rains, I'll use it. It'll rain for several days and there's really nothing you can do about it. So in between that time that it's been raining here, all of like I've got leaves off my strawberry plants that are getting eaten. I've gotten strawberries, almost all my strawberries that were that were red and ready to be picked had holes in them. So I'm gonna try planting some mary the, some of these marigolds in here, and I'm gonna turn this camera around to show you a little. Well, the girls have already thrown a lot of the strawberries to the chickens. Um, but some of the ones that I still have left, and some of the holes that are my strawberries are just getting really ate on and that's probably one of our favorite things so i'm gonna i'm just kind of working today trying to um get some some of the marigolds in, in this bed here's one of my plants that the leaves are getting eight 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 there are holes in the these I'm not sure if like some type of beetle is doing that or what. And if the, I have seen several little tiny white worms in my strawberries, putting little holes in there. I mean, you can see this one. So we, we take this off and give it to the chickens and don't get me wrong, it's great for the chickens, but at the same time, it's like, all of our strawberries are getting eight, so I probably picked 25 and we got four today, four or five. So they're, they're getting the majority of our strawberries, which is not good. And I've got, so I've got a baby marigold that I planted here and one right there. And I'm going to plant a few more in this bed and I'm going to let them grow up and We'll see how that helps. Marigolds are supposed to be um, good for de um, deterring certain worms and certain insects and slash animals. So we're gonna put a few in here and we're gonna try it. So that's one of the other things we're doing today. So we've got the raised beds moved. 
um, we're walking in what feels like pig slop. But we got them. Yes, it's been storming here in uh, deep south Mississippi. So we've got some mud slop that we've been moving around in. Um, but we've got our beds put up. We're just going to fill this up with rock. So we'll just extend the rock from here. Um, we'll make two little passageways full of rock. One here, one here along the sides of the beds. And then we'll fill all the slop up around them with rock. And that has always been our biggest part of the yard that drains off of this hill, which like I said, we're doing projects back here. So we're not done filling in dirt here, but it, it comes down and drains down here. And then it goes, of course I showed y'all about my elderberry plant. It goes straight down and washes all the way back out into the field into the woods so this is where it holds the most so i feel like once we get these beds done and rock all around them it'll be muddy in this area but not slop like that so we've got our raised bed set up we've got that going um and we're gonna keep working on that this afternoon. Probably won't get much planted in on today because today is Mother's Day. So hope you guys all had a wonderful Mother's Day um, and a, a restful day. We're just kind of gonna work in the yard until this afternoon. And there they are. Um, we'll keep y'all posted on the updates of how we get those filled up and what we get planted in on. Uh, we hope you have a good day. Happy homesteading, y'all.